What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoOp video. In this video, I'll be building an awesome 1080p mid-tier gaming setup for the back end of 2021, and I guess 2022 at this point, featuring an awesome sleek monitor from Ayama, some really nice peripherals from Cooler Master, and a powerful PC build with an RTX 3060. This setup is well and truly equipped to play the latest AAA titles. Everything from the new Forza Horizon 5 to Battlefield 2042, and Call of Duty Vanguard. In this video, I'll run you through all the components that make this setup possible in a bit more detail as we go through and assemble it from the ground up. And don't go anywhere because at the end of the video, I'll also be testing the setup out in real world gaming applications, which may include a few of these kind of moments. No! Whoa, he's in the bush, he's in the bush! Oh no, 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 this is a disaster. We're attacked by the Porsche, what's he doing? Let's do this. To kick the setup off, let's take a look at absolutely everything that I've bought to make this possible and we'll compile this in a handy shopping list for you guys too. As far as PC components go, this is an RTX 3060 oriented system based around this Aorus 3060 card and a Ryzen 5 5600X. I'll be coupling it up with an NZXT N7 B550 motherboard, making a really, really nice platform for today's build. The 3060 is a monster at 1080p, as you can see from our detailed review coverage. And while GPUs are still pretty hard to find, we hope that this should age as we head into 2022. 16 gigabytes of RAM alongside a 500 gigabyte Gen 3 NVMe drive aren't the highest end components on the market, but that's not the point. This setup isn't supposed to be an unlimited budget. It's supposed to come in around about the $2,000 mark in normal market conditions, though I appreciate that's a tricky term to use right now. 650 watts of power is provided by this XPG Pylon. What a name for a power supply, which basically concludes our PC components. Oh, and we'll be building our PC today inside this lovely case from Cooler Master the TD500 mesh. As far as peripherals go, I've got a lovely set of peripherals in from Cooler Master that will really complete the setup. Their MH670 is a wireless 7.1 surround sound headset, and the fact it's wireless is a massive bonus. As much as I love something like an ROG Delta, it isn't wireless unless you spend loads more money, making this quite a compelling option. It's also hella comfy, which really helps. The keyboard is also from Cooler Master, it's their CK352. It's got this nice two-tone design with raised keycaps that look good. They're not Cherry MX switches, in fact they're sort of own brand linear switch, which isn't quite as good, but they are cheaper for it and the switches do actually feel pretty good. The matte keycaps as well are also a huge bonus as far as the CK352 is concerned. For the mouse in this setup, this is always going to be a subjective choice. Some people will like the Model O style super lightweight mice, but for us the MM730 with 16,000 DPI, 70 million clicks and just a 49 gram weight are a really really good choice, especially for those first person shooters. It's one of the lightest mice out there as well that doesn't have that sort of skeleton design with holes in it. Something that I'm personally not a huge fan of. Sorry guys. Finally, the last bit of our peripheral puzzle is this, the MP511. It's basically an extra large mouse pad that will work well for the entire setup today. It's got enough room for your keyboard and your mouse and it's actually sort of anti-water resistant. As if you do go and happen to spill your drink on it, you aren't gonna have a great deal of issues. Before we go ahead and unbox any of these components though, the one core element of the setup we haven't looked at yet is our monitor, the Iama XUB2796QSU. Now this is a bit of a mouthful, but there's a few key facts and features you'll want to know. This monitor could be a bit of a hidden gem because for its great price point, you also get a 75 Hertz refresh rate. This is a nice addition for gaming, not quite as good as something like a 1440p panel, but if you want a monitor that's decent for gaming and still looks visually good, and doesn't give you the downsides of a TM panel, then this this isn't an awful shout. If this isn't quite the panel for you, I am a do also have a pretty good gaming line that's well regarded, and I'll pop links to those at the affiliate links in the description below. Inside the box, you'll find a few key elements. These include your stand base, which we'll of course use to secure the monitor onto a desk, with our center adjustable column. This center adjustable column will nice and easily slide into the stand base, and of course provide our monitor a complete stand. You'll then see yourself a thumb screw at the bottom, which you can simply tighten up with your hands, no need for a screw screwdriver or anything like that, allowing for essentially what is a toolless assembly. Finally then, you'll also see the monitor itself wrapped in this nice polystyrene packaging and protected with a nice protective bag. At the rear, you'll then find the area to actually mount the stand, but also a vase mount with pre-installed screws, which you can remove 
and use to mount the monitor on a monitor arm or something like that. The first thing that really strikes you when you pick this monitor up is just how thin those bezels are. With a very tiny chin, the rest of the monitor is super thin, actually pretty lightweight and super sleek, allowing for what's going to be a really immersive gaming experience. The idea for this setup was to provide gamers looking for that higher resolution, a great option that doesn't break the bank. The 3060 certainly has some legs at 1440p, as we'll see later, and the visual upside that you get from this higher resolution is a massive bonus. The monitor clips into the back of the stand really nicely with a satisfying click sound, and that's basically all there is to it. A really, really great looking panel that's going to work well for the setup today. Now, to actually drive this panel though, we do need, of course, a PC build. You can find dedicated PC build content over on the channel, but for this video, I'm going to go ahead and get this system assembled super quickly. There's only about eight or nine key steps to this process. Step one, unbox your motherboard and by extension your CPU and install the processor into the socket. This NZXT N7B550 design is a great looking board as I've just got thermal paste all over my finger. Not impressed. There we go, CPU will install nice and easily. It is an AMD CPU which makes the installation process that bit easier. I'll be back for step two once I've cleaned this up. Step two, take your Gale Orion memory and install these into the RAM slots on your motherboard. For us today, we'll be using the second and fourth fourth slots, that's these two here, to provide us with some really nice dual channel performance. This grey memory also fits quite nicely with our colour scheme and with a dash of RGB will look great with our RGB peripherals, our RGB graphics card, it will just fit the theme super nicely. Step three, locate the M.2 slot on your motherboard. For us, it's under this little NZXT cover, which will be permanently leaving off for one key reason. Our M.2 drive, which we'll be installing, actually has RGB built in. Remove this TD tiny little screw on your M.2 slot, slide the drive in, and that's step three complete. Nice and simple. Step four, go ahead and pick up your Cooler Master TD500 mesh, unbox the chassis, something which is actually never a very, shall we say, elegant experience with any case and lay it down flat on a table. I've just realized as well, you can actually see our overhead camera angle and our array of microphones, which hopefully should disappear once we take the tempered glass side panel off. With the case down flat, it's a much, much easier process when installing the motherboard, which we'll be doing a little something like this. Once your motherboard's in, we can move on to step five, six, I've already lost count, and actually install our graphics card. Oh yes, this is one good looking GPU and it works perfectly for the next step of the build. Simply go ahead and push the retention clip down. Keep your eyes peeled guys as well on these two empty PCIe slot covers as this is where our GPU is going to sit. Apply a bit of pressure, nice little click sound and then we can go ahead and screw it in. I realise as well I forgot to actually install the CPU cooler. For this build I'll be sticking with the AMD stock cooler as a great budget option uh, to keep our CPU cool without breaking the bank. So we can also go ahead and screw in the cooler at this stage of the build. And once we've done that all the core components are done. We just need to plug in some power cables which is where the next step of the build comes in and our power supply choice today. This is the XPG Pylon Bronze, a 650 watt really great value power supply unit that ticks all the boxes for our build very nicely indeed. I think this is about step seven and pretty much concludes the build process. We just need to go ahead and actually screw it into the rear of the case before going on to step eight, which is to power up our motherboard power connector, our CPU power connector, and all the front panel cables. You can find a more detailed guide on cables and wiring over on the channel in the card section. Now do check that video out. It should be super useful, especially if you're a first time builder looking for that bit more guidance. And once that's done, we can move on to the peripherals. I took on these peripherals a little bit earlier, but now for a bit more detail. The Cooler Master CK352 undoubtedly sits at the better value end of the spectrum as far as peripherals go. And while it might not be as premium as some of the other options on the market, it certainly is fantastic value. I also really like the raised keycap design. I think that looks awesome, especially when the RGB starts to illuminate and it works really well. Quick sound test as well of those keycaps. They're nice linear red switches, meaning there's no real resistance as you go down, there's no sort of actuation bump, but they are mechanical and you can not only feel, but also hear that in the switch design. The MM730 gaming mouse is unbelievably light considering that it doesn't have a hole oriented design and the bungee cable, something we found to be commonplace on lightweight gaming mice, helps to make sure there's no real resistance. You also of course get lower latency than wireless options on the market and it's really affordable. That's one thing Cooler Master do really well, it's great value 
Sony peripherals, and these two are no exception. Our headset will nicely complete our Cooler Master trio of peripherals, and the MH670 has seen rave reviews online for the price point. One thing I can really credit this headset with being is super comfortable, plus the fact that it's wireless is a major USP for me, leveraging the 2.4 gigahertz band to keep our cables to a bare minimum. Really, really nice work here. It's also got a built-in boom microphone, which we'll test out later, and the design is actually really quite plush. It reminds me of a set of kind of high-end aeroplane headphones, if that makes any sense, like a pair of Bose QC25s from a few years ago, and that's definitely not a bad thing. You get a nice bit of flexibility in the headband as well, making them comfortable on your head. And as I say, that wireless connection, a huge selling point. The only real point of criticism I have would be the USB connection. Micro USB is not particularly acceptable anymore, and it should have had USB-C. I've got no idea why it doesn't, so if anyone can elaborate on that one, that would be much appreciated. And then we just need to pop our lovely I am a monitor back on and we can finally go ahead and boot the setup up. As I say, if 1440p gaming is your jam, then this is looking like a really compelling option. All I really need to do now though is wire the setup up with power and data and then we can test it out in some of my favourite titles and some of your guys' favourite games as well. For now though, enjoy some nice visuals of the setup all booted and cable managed and I'll rejoin you in a second for some gaming. <laughs> First of those games is Forza Horizon 5. We're going to be running it at 1440p uh, with overall our settings tuned up to high. You can have a look more in the graphics section of the settings menu as well. So we're on the ultra preset all around. I'm going to start off the benchmark mode to keep an eye on the frame rate in the corner. And I'm really, really intrigued actually to see what results we get. Our frame rate and our GPU usage are just up here in the top right hand side. Unfortunately, Reva Tuner and Frame View don't work on Forza yet. They cause it to crash, which is why we've only got the basic frame rate in Info. Straight off the bat, we're sitting at around 80, 75, 85 frames per second. Not quite the frame rate you'll be after for our high paced first person shooter, but for our setup today in a racing game, this is pretty much perfect. Forza Horizon 5 is a much more difficult title to run than Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Horizon 3. The reflections, the shadows, and the lighting of this Mexican scene as we're attacked by the Porsche. What's he doing? It looks really, really, really good. Super smooth gameplay, and the IPS panel on this Ayama monitor looks awesome. Color reproduction is super super rich, really, really impressed with this. Before we go ahead and dive into the next title, I've gone ahead, opened Voice Recorder, which will allow us to switch now to the microphone feed from our Cooler Master MH670. The microphone here sounds pretty good. It's got kind of a radio-like EQ on it. I'm just speaking normally. It is a little bit processed for my liking and obviously isn't going to be great if you're the next Twitch streamer, but for communicating with friends over Discord and stuff like that, this is more than good enough. So nice work, Cooler Master. And the wireless is obviously a huge plus. Next up on our hit list, of games then is Fortnite. We're running at 1440p, but sort of competitive settings. Obviously, if you want even more frame rate, you can run at 1080p, but with everything tuned down to low, the render distance set to far, and a 1440p resolution, I'm willing to bet that we could see some quite interesting results, keeping the visual fidelity of 1440p while still getting some really impressive frame rates. We should be into a game within the next few seconds, and I'm really intrigued. Keep an eye, by the way, on the frame rate counter in the top left corner. That's MSI Afterburners Reva Tuna which will let us know what sort of FPS we're able to achieve. Tidy, tidy, tidy. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm invincible. I am invincible. Yes. Someone else here. I'm not alone. I am not alone. No, 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 no. Oh, no, this was a disaster. Oh, no. Oh, this is outrageous. No. Two chests in one building. That's the kind of look that I think we need in this second attempt at Fortnite. I should actually comment on the frame rate. We're currently sitting around about 250 frames per second. I appreciate there's not a great deal of action at the present time. So that will, of course, reduce uh, as the game starts to get more fruity. But still, for 1440p to be near that 300 or even over that 300, uh, a third chest in one building near or over the 300 FPS mark is um, well pretty incredible, really, actually. Yes! First kill of the game. Lovely stuff. That did get a little bit dicey, though. Uh, the surround sound headset did save me, though. It was the only way I realised where the car was actually coming from. So let's regroup, let's bandage up, let's reheal, and uh, carry on in our venture to win this Fortnite game. Probably not going to happen, but the frame rate still looks good, and that's the main thing that matters. 
Oh, it's always tense when you've got to fuel the car up, but I've just realized we're so close to the edge of the zone that if I don't get in this car and bomb it right now, we are going to die. The zone is going to outpace us. So let's get cracking. Let's get a few more kills on the board. Yes, there's a second kill. Lovely stuff. Got some nice loot there. Didn't really take a great deal of damage either. So uh, happy days all around on that front. And we're just on the edge of the zone. So we might be able to play the zone itself. Oh God, here we go. I see someone else. Come on. Come on, mate. You know you want to. I mean, either way though, with Fortnite, over two... 100 frames per second at 1440p competitive settings. Whoa, where did that come from? Whoa, he's in the bush, he's in the bush. Oh, no, 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 this is a disaster. No, that was, uh, that wasn't great. But we did get a couple of nice kills. The frame rate was really solid. And overall in Fortnite, we got some great results. It isn't just Fortnite that we tested though. We also ran the brand new Battlefield 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard. And here saw some great frame rates. In these titles, we saw 118 frames per second in Vanguard and 111 respectively in Battlefield 2042. Numbers which aligned really well with the likes of Apex Legends and GTA 5, all of which surpassed the 100 frames per second mark. In more esports games like Overwatch, Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege, the frame rate soared gradually from around the 150 mark to above 200 frames per second. While even titles like Cyberpunk showed not only they had legs at 1080p with more than 112 frames per second, but future legs at 1440p too, if you're prepared to sacrifice just a little bit of frame rate. On that note though, that pretty much wraps it up for today's full setup. If you enjoyed this one, I think it was a really, really good one, then make sure to get subscribed for more content like this. Check out all of our other build and setup content, and as always, thanks Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.